So with sales dropping, Philips had to do something. And in 1994, they decided to make a fresh new start with the CDI. And this time they advertised the system as a video game system. They released the model 450, which now had the look of a video game console. It had a retail price of $299. And they also started to release game controllers for the CDI system because before 1994 all the CDI systems were released with those controllers. They are basically nothing else than just remote controls but now they started to release uh, game controllers. Plus one accessory became more and more important than ever and that was the digital video cartridge. Almost or better let's say most of the games required the digital video cartridge mostly because uh, those featured full motion video sequences and the digital video cartridge has an MPG decoder it also has a 32-bit coprocessor and it also adds 1.5 megabytes of RAM to the CDI system and also now you had the ability to play video CDs on the CDI. The video CD was released in 1993 and it was a successor of the Laserdisc and actually it also was as successful as the Laserdisc so it only was more or less popular in Japan but not really anywhere else than in Japan. And yeah one of the reasons I guess was number one the video quality of a video CD for the most part it was lower than on a VHS tape and only a couple of movies actually had a video quality that was up to par or maybe even better than on VHS tapes and another drawback was that entire movies um, required more space than a CD could uh, provide. So in the end most of the movies came on two video CDs that you had to change um, somewhere throughout the movie and if the runtime of the movie was even longer like for instance in the movie Gettysburg then it actually came on four um, yeah. video CDs. And in 1996 Philips also released an internet starter kit and this internet starter kit uh, came with a 14.4 kilobyte modem then uh, a starter CD and all the cables that you need to um, go online with the CDI and it had a retail price of 329 US dollars it was released in the UK, in Belgium, in the Netherlands and in the United States and yeah it is one of the first or maybe even the first video game system in the end that had online abilities but all the effort that Philips put now into the CDI system didn't help any, any um, didn't really help sell the system. And yeah, one thing why the system uh, did not sell that well, even now that they put so much effort into the system, was that it could not compete uh, with the new upcoming 32-bit systems like the Sega Saturn, the Sony PlayStation, uh, or even the 3DO. So in 1998. Uh, Philips discontinued the CDI and yeah this was basically the story of the CDI system. Okay but next we're gonna take a closer look at the Philips 210. On the front of the 210 we have on the left side over here the disk drive then here is the button to open and close the CD drive then on the right side over here we have the on and off switch, then the play button and the stop button. Over here 
we have the display. Uh, the display doesn't show very much. I mean, uh, if you put in an audio CD, then it tells you which track is playing right now and it also shows you the time of the track. But except for that, it mostly only shows you uh, the three letters CDI and if the CDI has a um, reading error then it shows ERR and tells you that the CDI has a reading problem with this CD. And over here you have the infrared receiver and on the right side over here you have the port which, uh, which is called input and this port is used for the game controllers or for other pointing devices. Now on the back of the 210 we have also not a lot of things but over here on the left side this is the, um, the port for the power cable then over here we have the port for the SCART cable and of course the um, <coughs> composite one video, the, the yellow one and the two audio, red and white. Over here we have a port which is called input 2. Now many people think that this is also a port for pointing devices or uh, the second controller port for game controllers and I know it is mentioned in the manual of the CDI 205 that this is actually a second controller port and uh, it should be used for uh, also for pointing devices and uh, game controllers also for a keyboard but in the end this port was only used for one accessory only and that was the modem for the CDI. I know the Angry Video Game Nerd mentioned it in his uh, review of the CDI that the uh, input one or the port on the front uh, didn't work and he had to use the port on the back to play the games or to use the game controller and I guess he more or less made that up because uh, it would really be a stupid idea to have the port for the first player on the front of the system and have the port for the game controller for the uh, second player on the back of the system. In order to play two player games you needed one of those. This is a splitter cable and uh, you should connect it in the front to the port which is also called uh, input 1 and now you could um, connect two controllers to the CDI. Also if you connect two controllers to the splitter cable only controller 1 will be recognized by the CDI and uh, controller 2 will only be recognized in the game if you uh, actually play a two player game. If, if you still play a one player game or anything else or you're just in the uh, menu of the system or anything it will only recognize uh, the controller in port 1 and not the controller in port 2. Okay but now we continue under this cover here that says extension slot for digital cartridge, uh, yeah, it is self-explaining. So this is the slot for the digital video cartridge and it also says which, um, which model of the digital video cartridge you need, the 9956. And this is this one right here that I have. Uh, this is the second version of the digital video cartridge. The first version was called uh, the 9141. Uh, uh, the first version of the digital cartridge was a lot bigger. And this is actually the, uh, video, the digital video cartridge, the 9956. And in the end you have to unscrew those two screws. They are normally Torx screws, but you can also open those two with um, a flathead screwdriver. But if you ever wanted to open a CDI completely to clean the system or anything, those are Torx screws size 8. 
Okay, this was the, the Philips CDI 210. Now I made a, a slightly mistake in the beginning because I said that the CDI 210 for the most part is identical to the 205, but I checked the internet and uh, looked at some pictures and actually the 205 had also two buttons for, uh, you know, skip forward or backwards with the uh, audio tracks for instance and also on the back of the system you had also some other uh, connectors or ports for I guess uh, just an example was that they had an RV cable port on the back. Okay but this was the Philips 210 CDI and I also have another version of the CDI this one this is the Grundig 110E. This is exactly the same model as the Philips CDI uh, 470 and also from the size and from the design it matches also the 490 series. As you can see and also like I mentioned the 400 series is a lot smaller or compacter than the 200 series and yeah, I also read that this was more or less a price reduced version. So right on the front, uh, over here on the left side, we have the CD-ROM drive. Over here, you, uh, we also have the display and the uh, infrared receiver. Over here, we have the on and off switch, open close button, play button, stop button, and also the input one port for the pointing devices and game controllers. And also, like I mentioned with the input 2, this was used uh, for a keyboard that was available for the system. And on the back we have over here the input 2, now it is called Serial I.O. And also here we have the, the cover or the, let's say the slot for the digital video cartridge and it's also again the 9956. This is the port for the power cable and it doesn't have a, a SCART port but of course again the composite video and two times audio and for some kind of reason it also has a DC out. Okay now one thing that I really wanted to mention is that in today's days there is a big problem with the CDI and the biggest problem is this chip. This is the Timekeeper chip, which is called the M48T08-150PC1. It also has a second name, um, the MK48T08B-15. And this chip has on the front, I guess over here, a little battery inside and this battery saves um, the safe games for instance and yeah those batteries or better say the lifetime of those batteries is estimated between 10 and let's say 15 years so most of those batteries are dead in those systems so basically it means that um, that those systems don't have any safe features anymore um, if you unplug the system. And in a worst case scenario it could also happen that the CDI won't boot up anymore. And actually while I was recording a lot of gameplay for this review it actually happened two times that I turned on the system and it didn't let me continue to the normal menu Instead it said that I had to make room and delete all my save games on the system and it showed me the, the storage manager of the system but yeah it, it didn't have any, um, any save games on the system because all of them were uh, deleted since the battery died. But like I said it only happened two times uh, in my case since I actually bought both of those systems and I have to change this one uh, in one of those systems, I also have another one. You can buy them online on eBay. Uh, 
one of those cost me I guess about uh, $15 uh, without shipping so they are not very expensive but it's a pain in the ass to, to um, open up the system and change those chips.